if you want to get confused as a knife guy, go shopping for katanas. There are lots of manufacturers. There's all types of terms you probably will not understand. And there's a whole culture that permeates a type. I know guys that jumped in to go buy a katana and they walked away pretty much frustrated. They're like, I don't, I don't really know which one to get and I don't understand anything they're talking about. So I'm here to help. <laughs> I'm going to review these katanas like a freaking knife. If you don't like it, don't watch the video. That's just the way it's going to be. My channel, I can review them as butter knives if I want to. I've done this before. I have gone through this exercise once upon a time in TMP circa 2012. I reviewed the Cold Steel Katana then and I saw, how should we say, um, well, I'll just say it. Elitists roll in and they act like they own the Katana world, the sword world. Hey, if you're going to do this, this is exactly how we will demand you do it. Well, to that I say bullshit. Sorry, just being honest. I, I say bullshit. I'll review it any way I want. And if you don't like it, see ya. I'm here to help my subscribers that perhaps are not sword people. So in this review, unlike 2012, I'm not going to use all those terms which confuse people. I'll roll them on the screen right now, just so you know I know what they are. <laughs> and we're going to review them like big knives, and I will talk about the quality levels, a little about little bit about philosophy of use, but basically to show you the amazing quality of these Chines war ready katanas for prices which are unbelievable. Now hopefully you guys who are still with me in this video have embraced the fact that from China emerges some really amazing cutlery. We're not back in the 1990s or early 2000s anymore they have evolved. Chances are the knife clipped to your pocket right now from a major manufacturer, Kershaw, Spyderco, Cold Steel, was made in China, if not in the Orient somewhere. So you, you should be familiar with the quality levels, and you're going to see it here right now. Uh, the first Katana, again, I bought these in 2012. I may end up selling them. They were purchased for review to show to my audience. Is this Chaness and make sure I get the names right, speaking of confusing, Yamakami, 28 inch broad katana, gorgeous blade, very capable, and these ones are made out of 9260 spring steel. Now, back when we had our first katana review here, uh, we talked about a, a long discussion, probably overly long, about philosophies of use. And let me, I will revisit it, but just super, super briefly. And this one, by the way, and I write it just so I don't forget, is the Chines Nagasa. This is a 30 inch katana, has a fuller on it. And we'll talk about the weights and other things here in just a sec. Philosophies of use though, what would you have this for? Non-sword guys. Now, just like anything, whether it's a, a Civil War rifle, 22s, knives, uh, stamps, whatever. There's guys that that's all they do. They collect it. And there's a culture that grows around probably every type of sword uh, to include the katanas, right? Well, these guys will collect probably dozens. Some even have, I don't know, hundreds of them. And they are variations of a different type for different purposes. Maybe they have a historical significance. In a lot of ways, maybe they'll mimic an actual katana that's in a museum, but they can't afford that one, so they buy a replica. Tons of reasons why you would get to the philosophy of use of collecting. And I think that's primary for these things. That most guys are not going to use it as backyard cutters, cutting bottles in half, tatami mats, uh, sides of beef. <laughs> I think that's very rare. Most guys will put it in a presentation case on a stand, and enjoy looking at it, showing it to their friends. I think that that is what the majority of them will do. Obviously, like I said, they are go to war ready. I will stand by that. These are serious, and here comes your safety reminder, serious weapons. Uh, don't give these swords or anyone or anyone's like it to someone who's irresponsible, foolish, that doesn't know their potential danger, just like anything that is dangerous in the hands of a fool, it can hurt people who were not meaning to get hurt. You follow? 
would I ever use this for home home defense? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Uh, we talked about that in 12. Super quick though, it'd be super hard to defend it in a court of law. It says me, that's just my opinion. Uh, a jury would not look upon it too nicely. I mean, yeah, if that's the only weapon you had available, sure. Uh, but I myself would not be prepared to use such a brutal weapon. You're talking something that could basically cut off an arm with one swoop, maybe a leg, do serious damage to uh, another human being. So I don't even like thinking about it, and I'm really kind of leaning away even, even going there. Back in 12, we talked a little bit bad about it, but leave it at that. So self-defense, probably not. Collectability, that's philosophy of use. Now, I would say this one, well, both of these, actually. This is Chines uh, Yamakami. And I'll write the names uh, somewhere, either in the description or on the title. But again, it's confusing for a lot of guys because, of course, it's not in the Eng English language. Duh. And it confuses guys. And these models may come and go. I think they're still out there. Uh, this is SGC Yamakami and this is the Nagasha, or Nagasa, both by Chines. I still think they're out there. I searched about two months ago and I did see them for sale, but maybe they come and go. Made in China, made in China. If made in the United States, what do you think this one would cost? Right here. I'm just going to hazard a guess. A thousand bucks. A thousand. You can spend $50,000 on a katana. You know, if it's made in Japan by a master katana dude, you know, the price goes up and up. There's waiting lists. Again, there's a whole culture that surrounds that. I don't want to go into it. But that's what people do. It's like owning a Ferrari. You saw Kill Bill, right? Yeah, kind of like that. Kind of like that. Uh, so I, you're going to save a ton of money. Let's go on the prices. I paid back in 2012 $280 for this one. $300 on this one to bring it to tabletop for y'all. And man, are they gorgeous. I really like the blue wrapped handle on this. I like the brown wrapped handle on that. There's that terminology handle hey you can't call it a handle can did guys understand that speaking of which let's start back here and we'll look at the details this is a yamakami this is a cotton wrapped handle and you have some adornment <laughs> i know <laughs> katana guys that's not what it's called uh, again i rolled the terms on there so they just this is a very traditional japanese thing they just underlie it on the ray skin wrap cotton over it what i went around researching back in 12 heavily is I wanted a very tightly wrapped handle because if, I don't know, I did use it, practice cutting, played around with it, I don't want to come in unwrapped. I have had a katana that did this. These seem to be pretty excellent. So I've had them four years now. No, they haven't been used a lot, but I, I see no loosening on either of these handles. There's the brown. Here comes the beautiful blue. And you can find handles of all sorts and description not just cotton they can be rayon they can be leather and i know <laughs> here's the cap i told you i was going to review it just like a knife and all this is tight nothing's loose right here hey do you really care what type of adornment is under the handle uh not really i don't because you can't really see it can you what is this right here it's like a dragon or freaking lizard or something i don't know don't know I do care about this though, the guard. How tight is it? Uh, these wiggle just a little bit. See that? And, but the overall fit and finish for the price point, my estimation is pretty good. I wouldn't say it's outstanding, but it's pretty good. Now, if you go in the dojo and start whacking with this, are you going to get rattling? I don't know. Go ask the owl. I don't know. Here's a little bit of look, look see at that on this side of the guard. brass base to the blade there. I used to super care about this too, the cutout of the guard and what adornment it has. I think a lot of guys do. I don't really. Not so much. I used to. I don't anymore. This is really nice and a slighter weight than the other one. Speaking of which, this one, the Nagasa, three pounds, two ounces. And I think this one's the same actually. Three pounds. Oh, the Yamakami is three pounds, seven ounces because it doesn't have a fuller running on the blade so there's more metal in it and it's a broader katana designed for shearing a specialized goza cutter there you go there's some terminology for you 
So a broad blade, this one. And I really like that, the broad blade, so it has shearing potential. When I when I review a knife, I talk about that a lot, that a really broad blade just shears, especially with a sweeping katana motion like this. Incidentally, I probably won't show you inset footage of me using these because I am honestly not skilled enough to represent the blade a accurately, and I just think it would be distracting. <laughs> and if I'm going to sell them, I'm not going to go beat them up. So take it or leave it. That's just the way it goes. I love this blade, though. 9260 spring steel that means it can take a shock that is a fake hammond line there it's meant to look like it's differentially treated on the blade uh my understanding on these chines ones is they are mono tempered 9260 spring steel out of box don't expect like a knife edge that's really not what they do that being said they're decent could you cut paper with it yeah not like tiny little shards but it's good Ask any uh, real sword guy and they'll tell you, hey, these are plenty sharp enough to do a lot of damage. There's the tip on the Yamakami. That's a broad, strong tip too. I think sharpening a sword, especially these, is a freaking nightmare. Another reason I wouldn't want to go out and dull them. Uh, could you do it? Yeah, but it's such an investment of time. There's a certain way to do it properly. I've given it to professional sharpeners before. Uh, I think that Cold Steel Katana, and that guy was in a, a very experienced sharpener. His name was Zach Wood. And he rolled his eyes and he goes, I hate sharpening swords. I'm like, why, dude? It's just like a big knife. He's like, no, it's, it's different. It's very, very difficult to sharpen. Don't mess with the temper. He was doing it on a wheel, a low-speed wheel. And he's like, and then I have to finish it off by hand. That was just his technique, if I remember correctly. Uh, a nightmare. Uh, I've never sharpened a sword. I don't even think I could. Not to the level of a master swordsmith. I, there's no way. Could I put a functional edge on it? Yeah, I could. Here's a look at the Nagasa. Now, this is a thinner, faster in hand sword. So it's, and I really like bringing these two ta to the table because they're two different philosophies of use. This is a shearing sword, so it's going to be slower. It's designed for a larger fighter, maybe American size, maybe not an Oriental size. Uh, I don't know, five and a half, five foot tall dude, even though he's ripped. Uh, this is a big, heavy sword to be wielding with speed. When you make the blade thinner, you put a fuller in it. My understanding, it's going to be faster. And just swinging these around, you can understand, yeah, that's, that's the case. So we got mobility on this side, firepower on this side. A pretty interesting case study. Uh, there's all types of different types of fullers in katana. Some are thicker. Uh, I can't resist it. They're called like uh, bohai. Sorry. So that's more of a piercing tip here. Hey, will these rust? Absolutely. You have to keep them oiled up. I usually use rim oil. Sword guys have all their different uh, potions. Some will use this oil, that oil. Some will use Vaseline. Uh, I have found in my climate, yours may differ, rim oil works great and it doesn't mess around with my wood sheath. That's just what I do. So here's the guard on this one. I think I kind of showed you that. Tightness, decent. Hey, how strong are those? Uh, they're strong enough where, if my understanding, and I have swung these before, not on camera, cutting some stuff with them, other swords, they're, they're strong enough where you could hit a sapling about this big around as hard as you can and you won't do anything to the sword. Well, I shouldn't say anything. You may you know, muff up the edge a little bit, but you're not going to break it. These are strong swords, hence spring steel. They're designed to take a shock, maybe miss their target, hit a hard object, non-organic object, and stay in the fight, so to speak. Here's your sheaths. Very traditional. This is rayon right here. Wood, polished lacquer. Uh, these are showing some wear and tear on them just from storage and kind of messing around with them over the years. Uh, different sheath options, of course, you'll find different colors, different wraps. If you're looking at these or some other katanas, my advice would be, and I'm not the ultimate expert, but I am a pretty experienced knife guy and the same applies to swords, katanas. Price is a pretty good indicator of quality. So you can see what I got for around $300. Uh, 
that's probably a good entry point. You pay less than that, maybe less than 250. Maybe things have changed. I don't know. I haven't kept up. Uh, I don't know if you'll get as much of a sword. You know, you'll find the Chines name to be very well respected within katana circles for what they are. Are they like premium quality, hand fitted, no movement in the guard, perfect handles? Not really. They are mass produced, but with care and quality and they will usually stand up to some pretty hard use. So to me, it strikes that perfect blend of value for me. Uh, in addition, most knife guys, probably, probably you watching this video, wouldn't know the difference. I mean, you could go out and buy a $2,000, $3,000 katana, maybe even more, put it on your rack and stack these up against it, and you would look, you being at your experience level, would go, I don't, they both look the same to me. You know, if you go out and use it every day, which you never will, you know, maybe you'd see a difference there. Uh, other brands to consider, Dynasty Forge, Hanwi, uh, SBG makes some good ones, Ronin, and we're talking about Chines right now. And probably some others I don't even know about. Uh, are they worth it? Uh, absolutely. But what I would do, a couple things, is you probably will never use them. Right, you will uh, probably just put it on a display somewhere and show it off. Uh, is it worth three hundred dollars to do that? Well, we we guys we buy lots of stupid stuff, don't we? I mean, honestly, I'm just being truthful with you. Yeah, we do. I've rolled a lot of folding blades on the table that are more than these. So if you look in terms of quality uh, capabilities, really, I mean, not that you'll ever use it, but I think that the charm. Of, of looking at these blades is knowing that they are war capable. These are true fighting swords. I should say katanas. I mean, they are amazing for their price levels. This one is wicked. 30 inch, so it's longer. Has a lot of reach, real fast in hand, long handle, which by the way are attached by these wood pegs. So you can't actually tap those out. I didn't want to do that because I've done it before and sometimes that will induce uh, a fitment problem when you put it back on. You could look at the tang, which runs about like that. But they're warfighting katanas. That is cool in, in and of itself. Definitely conversation pieces. But here's something you also might want to consider. If someone ever breaks into your house, they can steal them. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to lock these down. If you have a guard like this, you could loop a cable through it and put it to whatever display case anchor to the wall that you have. And heaven forbid, they could be used on you. Uh, I don't want that to happen to you guys. So just... Just a couple things to think about. I think both these are great collectibles. Tough dojo cutters if that's what you want. They are mono-tempered. You can get differentially tempered katanas from the brands I already mentioned. They are out there. Uh, for me, uh, they, they, they kind of do it for me. The value is way, way up there. Uh, if I can find a good place to send you, I will put a link in the description. If not, you guys got to go hunting by yourself. These are Chines Cutlery Reviewed like knives because everyone understands that uh, nagasa right here and this is a yamakami uh, kind of heavier but very capable and beautiful high value katanas see ya